This video provides a brief overview of RMF Lab Task 2-2, Security Control Selection. Task 2-2 is part of Step 2, Select, and aligns with SDLC Initiation. The roles primarily responsible for this task are the Information Security Architect and the Information System Owner. These roles are supported by the Authorizing Official or the Authorizing Official's Designated Representative, the information owner or the information steward, the information system security officer, and the information system security engineer. Security control selection is set based on the security categorization of the system. This categorization will allow the identification of a baseline set of controls that will be used as the starting point for defining controls for the system. This baseline set of controls can then be tailored to meet the needs of the actual system by adding controls, removing controls, or modifying the parameters of a control to fit the risk-specific needs of the information system. This is all part of the tailoring process. Tailoring is accomplished by applying scoping, parameterization, and compensating control guidance. The tailoring process should also set minimum assurance requirements as appropriate. The system security plan is updated based on the tailoring process and the security control selection. Controls that are added or removed are justified and noted in the SSP and the SCTM as the AO will need to approve these changes. Part of this task also includes drafting the initial Information Security Continuous Monitoring Strategy, or ISCM strategy. This includes defining criteria such as volatility of a specific security control and the appropriate frequency and monitoring of those controls. This ensures that controls that can support the concept of near real-time risk management and the concept of ongoing authorization are built into the SSP and identified in the ISCM. The ISCM, as well as the SSP, will identify controls that are inherited from a common control provider. These can be referenced or included in the SSP itself. In net-centric architectures, subsystems can be added and removed dynamically. In cases where dynamic subsystems are included in the information system, the security plan for the system should include descriptions of the functions of the dynamic subsystems, the security controls employed in the subsystems, constraints or assumptions regarding the functions of the dynamic subsystems, and the associated controls in those subsystems. The SSP should also note dependencies of other subsystems on the proper functioning of the security controls of the dynamic subsystem, procedures for determining that dynamic subsystems conform to the security plan, assumptions and constraints, as well as the impact of the dynamic subsystems and associated security controls on existing security controls in the information system. Sometimes security services are provided by external providers. In these cases, the organization defines the external services provided to the organization describes how the external services are protected in accordance with the security requirements of the organization and obtains necessary assurances that the risk to the organizational operational assets, individuals, other organizations, and the nation arising from the use of the external service is acceptable. In the past, the use of external service providers was fairly rare and often limited to organizations that provided scanning and external security functions. Today, with the advent of cloud-based technologies, external service providers are fairly common. This task also looks at the use of replicated subsystems. This often occurs in complex systems. When we use replicated subsystems, common vulnerabilities can be exploited by a common threat source thereby negating redundancy. Replicated systems are often built off the same image and contain the same vulnerabilities. These must be monitored carefully to ensure the security profile is often updated. 
if security controls are not updated frequently on replicated system, an impact due to a security incident against one subsystem might cascade and impact many subsystems at the same time as they will be all vulnerable to the same threat. In summary, in this video we've covered the alignment of this task with the SDLC, determined responsibility for this task, identified control selection, looked at SSP and ISCM requirements, examined Netcentric environments, discussed external service providers and replicated systems. If you like this video, be sure to click on the thumbs up and comment below. Subscribe to the Cyber Recon channel and click the bell to be notified when we publish new videos. This video is part of the Cyber Recon RMF lab and training environment. Like all the training provided by Cyber Recon, our RMF training is built on the principle of multimodal training. Multimodal training exposes the student to training concepts in different ways, including learning games, video interaction, practice quizzes, instructor interaction, and hands-on experience in an environment that simulates working through the RMF in a real organization. This training also includes an updated RMF book and lab guide. Want to try out multimodal training for yourself? Click on the link on the right for a no-obligation trial of this training experience, including access to all of the multimodal training for Step 1 of the Risk Management Framework training program.